from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme for our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is Episode 22, Segment 1. In our last episode, we reached Washington, D.C. aboard Amtrak's Cardinal Train. Today, we begin the journey back to Chicago. Let's check out a few more sites in the capital, then we'll board the Cardinal as it replaces its electric locomotive for a diesel and departs from Washington's fantastic Union Station. While Amtrak's train, the Cardinal, begins its westward run in New York City, my wife Liz and I are catching it in Washington, D.C. The Capitol Building is the most prominent government building in the District of Columbia, and it's a good place to launch your tour of Washington, D.C. Visit the office of your U.S. representative or senator, and they'll fix you up with a tour of the Capitol, a place where Congress meets to make laws and carry on other business as directed by the U.S. Constitution. Oregon 2nd District Congressman Greg Walden's office supplied this tour guide who led our small group deep into the bowels of the sprawling house office complex. He's a staff member and knows his way around these corridors. It's like we're in a mine. Roman gods and goddesses? Here we're seeking the end of this huge line. All these cool tunnels finally brought us to our goal, the U.S. Capitol Building. This is where you can visit the Capitol without any help from your congressman. Our little group, we just weaved through and stayed together. Soon we found ourselves under the massive Capitol Dome. This is a jaw-dropping part of the tour. All these figures below the windows tell stories of historical events important to the United States. America's discovery by Columbus and Pocahontas saving John Smith are two examples. This rim was done a third of it by Ramiti. So if you see the aircraft, seen to the right of the aircraft is Columbus. So everything from Columbus discovering America to the Mexican-American War was done by Ramiti. He would have done war, but when he was working on the Mexican Further down are paintings of important historical events. Thomas Jefferson, he's the man in red, the red vest. His feet and hands are larger than the hands of every other person at the table. So Franklin, Madison, Hamilton, Adams, this symbolized the fact that he had a larger hand. Our first commander in chief, George Washington. General Washington surrendering his commission. Imagine if five minutes before it was taken or set. The shortest way to our next stop was this little subway. Our guide told us he wasn't supposed to use it for tour groups like ours, but Liz charmed him into leading us aboard. <laughs> I've done this. Yeah, at a brisk pace, you need it by foot, but you have to count. He will beat you there, but he'll beat the doors. That's the trick. No, yeah, no, a lot of people like to do this. Yeah. This is cool. It is. I missed out on the White House tour. Yeah, well, the rest of Washington is open. 
This led us to Statuary Hall. Each state is allowed to have two statues of prominent people in their history. One of Oregon's statues goes all the way back to statehood almost, and that's Senator Baker. Our tour of the Capitol was worth the crowds and the security checkpoints, but we were glad to get outside again to the mall where the sprawling monument to World War II is located. We had started the day at the Capitol where Congress fulfills the duties of the legislative branch of government. Behind the Capitol is the U.S. Supreme Court performing judicial branch actions. A careful look revealed a deception. This is a huge curtain masking the renovation work being done to the building. The highest profile branch of government is the executive branch housed here in the White House. Due to Congress's sequester, we weren't able to tour where every president since John Adams has lived. I had previously toured the White House, and I highly recommend it when Congress returns to funding the government. We at least got to see the White House from the outside. Curiously, this group of people were stationed on the roof as I was videotaping. Here at the West Wing, a U.S. Marine stands guard to protect the president. While we were on our way to the White House, we encountered this spontaneous crowd waiting for, well, it became obvious as events unfolded. We later learned that this was President Obama returning from a trip to Florida. There's a lot to do in Washington. You can visit this memorial to the writer of the Declaration of Independence and our third president, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson holds center stage here surrounded by his magnificent words of the Declaration of Independence, asserting that all people are endowed by their creator with inalienable rights. His words that gave me goose pumps were these, warning that if the country didn't deal with the slavery issue, that it would lose God's blessing and descend into bloodshed. My reaction shouldn't be surprising. They made Jefferson, dependent on his own slaves, tremble. The Jefferson Memorial is located in the Tidal Basin it shares this area with the sprawling monument to Franklin Roosevelt. Among his numerous achievements during his record four terms as president, he's known for leading the country out of the Great Depression and his fireside chats on the radio, giving U.S. citizens hope during the dark days of the Depression and World War II. The Tidal Basin's newest monument was this one, honoring Martin Luther King, Jr. Okay. Mom, I just 
people from all over the world come to pay their respects to this peaceful fighter for justice, this advocate of nonviolence. The monument includes a line out of his mountaintop speech, delivered the night before his death. For those who want to know more thoughts from this civil rights champion, these words from Martin Luther King can be read on this wall. A must-see site for us was the National Archives, and the must-see part of this is the original copies of the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. We made sure we saw those founding documents and had to pull ourselves away from the outstanding displays of other national historic treasures. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Our goal is to help you elevate your level of English proficiency in a way that causes the least amount of stress. Our approach is to make English uh, language learning interesting and fun by using a thematic approach. Our first theme is trains and railroads. This ends segment one of episode 22. We'll roll up our sleeves and get into some academic language work right after this. <laughs> This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. Reading a book about an instructional theme can make English more comprehensible. Seeing a movie based on that book can do even more to develop tools for English proficiency. If you want to have fun doing this, and I suggest making English learning as fun as possible, read Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg. This Caldecott Award winner takes readers on a wild fantasy train ride to the North Pole using much of the lore of American railroads. The story begins in Grand Rapids, Michigan in the 1950s. The plot begins when a boy awakes on Christmas Eve to see a train called the Polar Express. The conductor invites him aboard and the adventure begins. I suggest reading the book first. It has beautiful illustrations that will provide many context clues for the readers then rent the movie to see how the story is treated and, of course, to see the awesome special effects. A fun way of supporting your English acquisition is to read Polar Express. At the least, it'll be a fun experience, and you'll think of it every time you drink hot chocolate. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. <laughs>